Well, I think we've just seen the greatest king walk we're going to see in the year 2020. This is an absolutely epic position that we just saw. This was a game, uh, it was played on leechess.org. We are right now in the uh, 2020 uh, U.S. Online Collegiate Rapid and Blitz Championship. This is an event that is sanctioned by the U.S. Chess Federation. It's put on by St. Louis University, and they are playing on Lee Chess. I will leave a link to this, so if you guys do want to go check out this entire tournament, it's today and tomorrow. Today was the Rapid. By the time you see this, there'll be the Blitz. You can go online. You can see all of the entries. You can see all the people that are playing. You can watch the games, and you can even go to the live TV if you want to check out um, the STL Chess Club's coverage of the event. We got uh, National Master Caleb Demby and Niger uh, holding it down, doing the commentary of this awesome event. So if you do want to check it out, I'm going to leave that link for you in the description. This game was played between Gregory Oparin from Mizzou with the white pieces here against International Master Cameron Wheeler, uh, who goes to UT Dallas. And it's absolutely this, we got here, we're going to back it up. But this position, if you ask the computer, despite the fact that white is down a queen and in exchange, uh, the computer actually says this is zero, zero, zero. Uh, and the point is white actually has this absolutely remarkable plan of running the king all the way in and then possibly pushing for g7 in, in some situations. And we're going to back it up here and see exactly how we got here. So the game actually kicked off with a very interesting opening. We got the bird. The bird is the word. The bird is on the board. And we got a reverse Leningrad situation where we immediately saw queen to b6. This is a very interesting idea by black, just not letting white castle immediately. So you might expect white to play something like e3, but white actually had bigger plans, slightly more ambitious plans, played d3 and e4, and eventually ended up with a huge share of the center. So, okay, obviously a very interesting way of playing. This does give black a couple of squares, like notably the f5 square. Maybe black will be able to hit the center, something like f6 coming sometime in the future, and possibly something like h5, just controlling these dark squares so that this knight might be able to come back to f5, putting a little bit of pressure on the center. h3 was played, kicking the knight away voluntarily. White just got castled, and now we see knight to a6. And black's basic strategy is going to be something like putting this knight on f5, remaneuvering this knight to e6, and trying to put a lot of pressure on this d-pawn. White, though, should be very comfy. White has a lot of extra space, and all of the pieces are still on the board, so potentially black could end up getting a little bit of cramped. Overall, should be relatively good for white so far. Rook to b1 was played, just over protecting that b pawn. The knight came in, the king protected the pawn. We got some knights bouncing around. And now white is probably thinking, if this knight does land on e6, it would be a great idea to have a pawn on the c3 square. So in this position, the knight moved out of the way, attacks the queen. The queen got out of the way. c3 now protecting the knight. And in some position, we saw b4 just getting even more control over that c5 square. The queen has to return and rook to f2. And around here, it's about now that things start to take a very interesting turn. I think around here, white had a very interesting conception. So far, white has had a very pleasant position. It's just been a little bit of extra space, a little bit of cramped pieces for black. But he makes a very interesting strategic decision, and we're going to see the first uh, sacrifice of, of interest in this game. So after some captures here, bishop to d7, white does decide to grab this d5 pawn. And this is a very interesting move, because now bishop to c6 traps the rook in. Uh, so he protects his rook, and here he's obviously offering a sacrifice in order to get a very strong center. So I don't know if this is 100% correct by white. It certainly makes the game a lot more interesting. And after some recaptures, we see the d-pawn fall. Uh, but there's obviously a lot of compensation here for white. It kind of feels like one of those positions, too, where in real life, especially these are rapid games, it's 10 plus 5. Uh, so they get 10 minutes, and they only get a 5-second increment. It's obviously going to be a lot easier to play this kind of position with the white pieces, but it's one of those positions where, like, you give it to a computer, probably it's going to be like, oh, yeah, it's really easy to play black because I just avoid a lot of the complications. But in real life, it's really hard. And at this point, uh, black actually had four minutes and white only had two and a half. So time will become a very interesting issue as we get kind of a little bit closer even to the end game. So knight to f5 was played. Uh, the rooks came in, the queen came up. Here, the knight hops in to the c5 square. We see white, uh, sorry, we see black defend against the fork. 
and after we see the knights bounce around, we begin to get the idea that these two pawns might actually be very menacing from black. They are starting to storm down the board. Here they come. So white really does need to be very careful around here. Uh, black even wants to trade some rooks. White decides to keep the pieces on the board. Probably a very good decision. And in this moment, we see at some point uh, the pawn going to e6. Now, around here, black actually has a very strong move, but one that's probably not so easy to play. So you can always pause. There's going to be a lot of very interesting moments in this game. I just kind of want to slow down in certain spots and just look at the good stuff here. Um, black actually could have played a very, very strong move. And the move looks strategically undesirable. It's the move pawn to f6. Something like this would have given black a very large advantage. And it looks really strange because you are blocking in the bishop, and it's not super obvious how that guy will ever get back into the game. So it's very understandable why black would not have played this move. But now wherever the knight goes, you know, we can move this guy somewhere. It will become a little bit more obvious as we look around the position that black actually has a lot of different threats. For example, a3 might be coming, h4 might be coming to try to get the g3 square for the knight. And black actually probably will be able to not only get these guys rolling, but also create some issues nearby the king. So a lot of interesting stuff could potentially have happened f6 the way to go not so easy especially with only two minutes on the clock to kind of make these really large decisions instead decided to take the bishop allowing white to take on f7 and uh, yeah after some captures back the queen stays on the board the pawns are still rolling and yeah we got some position around here where it should be good for white but I think it's right here. White had to find an absolutely incredible move. And oh, look at the clock now. It's at 16 seconds. So White had 16 seconds. Uh, go ahead and take 16 minutes if you have to. Can you find the best move for White here? There is a crazy, incredible move that, uh, that could have been played here. <laughs> and White could have won on the spot. However, if he did that, then we wouldn't have got the amazing finish that we got either. But uh, yeah, I mean... This one was a, a roller coaster, and with no time, these two actually played really well for the, the time that they were given. The amazing move here that White could have slammed on the board would have been pawn to d6, an absolutely incredible move. Not only just simply threatening to take right away on e7, but also clearing this, this diagonal for the queen. So in, in any case, White is going to get a huge attack here. Not an easy move to play. It's actually defended by four separate pieces, but uh, on any capture, something good is going to happen for white here, just based on the fact that like a check is coming in, uh, or at minimum, we're just going to be taking this if you don't take us back. So something like that could have been pretty amazing. But okay, that wasn't found, and now it's going to be a little bit more complicated. But g4 is finally played, we get the queen attacked, and we see this a pawn. It's running down the board, it's running fast. White tries queen to f2, after this trade, queen to b2, and suddenly it's white that looks to be facing some very serious problems. Uh, the queen moves back, a2, here comes the pawn, and white is starting to run out of options. He's going to have to sacrifice the queen. White takes the knight, a queen was made, the queen is traded, and we take back here, and we get this absolutely remarkable position. White only has two minor pieces for a queen and a rook. And sure, white has a couple extra pawns, but what is going on here? And it actually turns out to be very difficult for black. It's again a situation where with 13 seconds on the clock, black would need to find another very difficult move just in order to win this game. So I think this is one of those positions where, you know, probably in a long game, maybe black would figure this out. But uh, go ahead and challenge yourself here. As black, how do you win? If you don't, you're going to, we're going to learn here that it's actually these pawns so near the king are super menacing. At some point, we probably will be able to play g7, getting at least the, the queen back. But uh, maybe white can get even more if he can get another piece into the game. So what black needs to do here, believe it or not, is h4. This is the strongest move in the position, preventing the king from entering the game. But with seconds on the clock, how would you see what is going to happen here? Queen to f6 was played instead, and suddenly after bishop to e4, this position is actually just about equal, which makes hardly any sense. But uh, now after h4, uh, hopefully you guys can see the plan. You know, we've kind of, we teased this position a little bit. 
The plan is to bring the king. In comes the king, king to g2. After the check, the king runs up. The queen gives another check. And still, again, it is around equal in this position as the seconds are ticking down. Seven seconds on the clock for black. And here, he actually plays the losing move. The only move for black here to stay in the game, uh, or at least one of the only moves, was queen to f6. The idea is, even if this king does run all the way to h6, this pawn will be pinned. So you're just trying to make it really hard for white to, to move that g-pawn. As it were, in the game, we saw queen to g3, and suddenly white's plan comes to fruition. King h5 and white is just going to win this game now. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, the king is just coming up. There's nothing black can really do about it. The king is going to come up. The rook is moving back and forth. G7. <laughs> and you have to give the queen, but uh, white doesn't even lose any material. After this capture, the knight simply went back to e6. And it's actually a mate in 12 here. But if you look around, it's easy enough to see that we're winning because the rook has no square. <laughs> white at minimum just plays bishop to g6 next and is going to be able to at minimum just take that rook so yeah that'll do it just one last time these these last few moves here are, are really worth taking a look at uh this this was really an awesome game to watch i was checking it out live it was super exciting so i would encourage you guys to definitely check out all a lot of these games in the the collegiate championship here have been super fun super exciting so check the link so that you know where to go and watch it live and uh, maybe you can check out the Blitz tomorrow. That could be even more insane than what we've seen today. And if you do like these kinds of recaps, let me know in the comments below. Hit subscribe. Check out the channel. Tons of stuff there. Uh, I think you're going to like it. So I'll see you guys.